Homecoming season is upon us, and one of the great vendors here in the Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area that will be popping up at homecomings across your yard is here to join us today to talk about the roots of their business and their outreach specifically to the Divine Nine community. David and Jennifer Mercer are the owners of Divine Fitness. Brother and sister, it is a pleasure to have you today. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. <laughs> so, Dave, you are um, you're an alumnus of Coppin. Um, That's correct. And, and you and your lovely wife, Jennifer, are, are brothers and sisters of mine. So let me get that ethical part of that out of the way. Um, tell us about the roots of Divine Fitness. Um, and, and because it's interesting, we see a lot of companies that specialize in uh, Greek paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we see a lot of companies that specialize in fitness paraphernalia separate. You've kind of bridged the two. So tell us about the roots of, of putting those together and, and how, how you try to build that culture among the organizations. Well, it's kind of, it kind of started with the idea I had uh, a long time ago. I've been in the uh, fitness space for quite some time. Uh, my major is in uh, sports management and my background. Um, I, I'm a trainer, a personal trainer, and I've just kind of been, I've worked with several gyms and I've been in that space for a while. And after I actually crossed into Alpha, um, it was one of the things I noticed that uh, was kind of missing. I noticed that there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a space for, um, you know, Greeks that kind of come into the fitness or be comfortable with fitness and, you know, have something to kind of rep um, the organization at the same time. And during this pandemic, it kind of opened up the door and some of these ideas that was floating in my head. And it kind of led to the um, maturation of divine fitness. So as as we came into this pandemic and we kind of looked around, we saw that, you know, that there was a need there. That's when we started to um, work on launching divine fitness. And kind of what we wanted to do is bring, like you said, merge the two, bring our organizations um, to the fitness world and promote that healthy life, lifestyle and living um, all while, you know, you know, looking good and feeling good at the same time. Let's talk about that, Jim, because you, I know you specifically, you know, kind of offline, we've always had conversations over the course of the pandemic of like adjusting to professional life at home, right? So how did fitness, obviously a lot of folks were copping Peloton bikes and trying to get their body right while we were at home. How does that, that incorporate with designing, considering, um, you know, options for what makes people look good and feel good while they're working out? Um, that's a good question. So I think for, for us, you know, working from home obviously was an adjustment. And when the gyms closed, I think that it really, it opened up people's mindset around fitness, you know, fitness could be outside. And so we were going up to the schools net nearby our house and um, running on the track and things like that. So we could bring the kids with us a lot of the times. And then we ended up buying some bikes and we hadn't rode bikes in years. But, mm -hmm. you know, it opened our eyes that fitness is all around us. You know, you can work out at home, you can work out outside. You know, we didn't have to rely on the gym. And, you know, those COVID pounds, <laughs> those were real, <laughs> you know, so, you know, it was nice and comfy in the beginning of the pandemic, but towards, you know, like the middle, about the summer of last year, you know, we realized that we need to stay active and being active um, not only helped us, I think, physically, but also helped us mentally. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was a lot trying to navigate and trying to remain healthy and stay health conscious while being home and trying to be parents and business owners and professionals. It was a lot. And on your mental health, you know, it was, um, I don't know how to explain it. I think it, it was an eye opening experience for us where we realized um, putting our health needs first was a requirement. And so we wanted to bring that part of the business to the forefront even. Um, is that, you know, your health is just beyond the physical part of your body. Mm -hmm. You feel good. And I think, you know, sometimes when you put on that, those clothes and you put on a nice outfit, just like when you, you know, do your hair or anything else, it, it changes your mindset. It helps mm -hmm. you feel well, a little bit you. better. Um, and, and then once you feel better, you end up doing a little bit better. And so that was kind of the idea behind creating the fitness line is that, we want people to be comfortable, but we also want you to be conscious of like your health and your mental health as well. Let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about that because I think the interesting part about creating a fitness line um, specifically for the divine nine is that it gives you a, a venue for some really huge networks of professional black folks to promote healthy living. Yeah. 
Um, was that was that a conscious part of you guys conceptualizing the business and how have the organizations, um, I guess, embraced the opportunity to take to say, hey, think about fitness, think about working out, think about encouraging brothers and sisters in doing this? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, that's a great question. So I think for us. Finding a niche market was important. Um, you know, we already know there's a lot of health disparities in the Black community. Um, you know, we're the highest when it comes to heart disease, when it comes to cardiovascular issues, when it comes to diabetes and obesity. And so all of these kind of health disparities that exist among the Black community are just ones that exist because lack of resources and then lack of education. Um, and so for us, it made a lot of sense to promote it within the Black community. And it made a lot of sense for us to connect it with um, our, our own passion, you know, our own passionate areas. And so being a part of um, Black Greek organizations, it gave us something to attach our mission to. And it gave us a space to promote health within communities that need it the most. And so that's where we're starting. How how central has though the that relationship been in helping you to establish it like the infrastructure of the business? Um, has it been networking that, that you would have expected? Has it been avenues that open to get you um, on different campuses to get you in different places for people to see the apparel? How is that? How is how is that network worked out in that way? I think they've been uh, really receptive. Everyone who's kind of heard the mission, understands kind of what we're trying to get accomplished, has welcomed us with open arms. I mean, I don't think we ran into anybody who was like negative or saying that, you know, you can't do it or this shouldn't be done. Everyone sees the need. Like she said, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things in the black community that we just don't talk about and we don't promote and we, we don't we just push by the wayside. So coming into this space, we wanted to make sure that it's, you know, we obviously wanted to put out nice things, but we wanted to make sure that we were attaching messages behind it. And to your question, I mean, the networking has been good. Like, you know, brothers and, you know, and sisters, you know, have been really welcome in supporting the brand, um, you know, help pushing us, advertising, you know, everything. So I, I feel like, you know, it's, it is a big community. So it's not just us in it. Mm -hmm. I feel like everybody is, is like is rooting for us and like helping pushing us forward. So it's been really good. Yeah. Yeah, just another say. disclosure. I had on the shirt the other day interviewing yeah. the president on the low. So <laughs> <laughs> you agree, say, Jen? I was going to say, um, yeah, to David's point, I think finding that niche market, working within the Divine Nine organizations, um, you know, you already have the networking there. There's already tons of vendors that you can work with and which has been helpful for us. Like um, we currently are doing a uh, promotion this weekend. Here's a little plug <laughs> with uh, Rogue Gamma Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And with us, you know, being an official vendor, we get to work with different chapters within different organizations. We also get to network and work with other vendors as well. And so it gives us an opportunity to kind of cross market as well as promote some of the um, internal initiatives that different chapters and organizations are promoting. And so, you know, it's really, it has layers to it, but it's, uh, it's allowed us to connect with so many people and to partner and get different business opportunities um, kind of really early on. We're only, what, less than six months mm -hmm. <laughs> officially launched. So, you know, it's pretty great that we have already a network that we can, you know, do some business with and to, you know, kind of lean on one each, one another. Let me drill down on the, on the part that where you said official vendor. Now, a lot of people want to start, um, you know, companies that, that specifically cater to Greek organizations. Yep. You guys are officially licensed with Correct. the organizations. And, and not to talk, you know, dollar signs or anything, but how, what is the process like? How intricate is it? to get set up in such a way that you can do business mm -hmm. with these large fraternities and sororities, because I would imagine it's, it's not an easy thing to do. So if anybody's out there looking to you to say, how do I get started? What would be you know, the top one or two things that you would say, here's what you need to do or you need to think about if you want to do this? Um, so the, the journey for applying for um, these licenses to become official vendor with different fraternities and sororities it's pretty intricate. Um, you know, there is an evaluation process in which they look to see what your store is already selling. And if it is kind of on par with their own mission, their own um, brand. And, you know, if it's not, then those are things that you have to adjust. You might actually not 
be able to become an official vendor. So for us, we were very intentional about the type of products that we created, um, how we marketed our products, what our mission was, and making sure everything aligned so that when we did apply to become an official vendor, that we already looked appealing in the beginning. Um, and then there's a lot of rules, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, when you become an official vendor, there's certain products that you cannot sell. There's certain ways that you cannot brand, you know, the official names of the companies or the businesses. And so, you know, we can't put a shield on certain items. We can't wear, you know, we can't provide items that have um, official logos or trademarks in certain areas of, a, of apparel. And so there's a lot of things to keep in mind. And so, um, you know, the application process is pretty lengthy and, you know, they do kind of go through your background with a fine tooth comb because you're representing them. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's, it's very important that you do your research and that you make sure that you're aligned with what that brand represents. Dave, when we go to a convention or boule or things like that, you know, we see a lot of vendors and there are some brands that we, I guess, commonly associate with, I'm going to get a shirt from such and such when I'm there, or mm -hmm. I'm going to order something from blank, fill in the blank store. What is the, what is the grind like to participate in a lot of these events that can be all over the region, all over the country? Um, how, how difficult is that? You guys are, 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 are married, you got a young family. What is that? What is that like? And 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 how do you kind of balance the the, the road work you have to put in with building a brand like that? Um, I mean, to your point, it is a competitive market, and it is something that um, you have to be very strategic about. And so, for us, that we since we do have a family and we do have schedules that we have to you know keep, like we can't stop you know the kids going to school and things like that. So we have to. Be, <laughs> <laughs> you would mean, prefer to stop them from going to school? Yeah, I don't know. I said, I'm telling you, <laughs> but we have to be very strategic in uh, where we're going and picking locations and does it really fit the brand and does it really work and does it make sense? Mm. Uh, so as we like, you know, mm -hmm. at any time we're, you know, we're attaching ourselves to it, we, we you know all that goes into account because like you said, I mean, there are certain things that we just can't do, even though we want to do. And there are certain things that like make more sense for us to be attached to or be at. Um, than others. So it is a um, strategic process that we have to go through. Yeah. It is nice, though. Right now, we can do a lot of things virtually. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're huge fans of virtual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, is, what is the best part of, of owning uh, a fitness brand? Because one of the, the, the dynamic things about Divine Fitness is that you guys are all over social media. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the artistic campaigns are high quality, uh, great looking models, many of whom we know. Um, what, so what, what is the best part of being a, able to showcase a really high quality brand, even so early in the game, um, that people have really taken to? Good question. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I mean, just quick, you know, knee jerk, um, I guess the rea reaction would be, I mean, for me, I think the, the best part is to see our growth because mm -hmm. from, <laughs> from the time we started to now. I mean, anybody who's been attached and seen us, we've changed tremendously and we're con we're constantly growing and learning yeah. and, you know, you know, getting anything we can, like filling our brains with knowledge that will help us propel us in the right direction. So I would say for me, that is the biggest and most rewarding thing is to watch us grow and watch us be successful because I know it's a family business and like, you know, like so we're like we're entrenched in it, like we're you know full speed ahead in it. And like, you know, it's like our baby and everything we do, um, you know, for our business and like the little success, we celebrate everything. So mm -hmm. you know, highs and lows. So like that journey has been very rewarding. Like anyone who's owned a business or been attached to it. I mean, like they understand what I'm saying. Like it's it's mm -hmm. really rewarding for those little victories. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing I would ask, um, when, when you look ahead and say, what what does growth or what does the ultimate success look like? Um, is it that you're, you're, you're being pursued to be at every homecoming at every city event and events in cities all over the country? What does, what does the biggest form of success look like for you guys? Oh, that's a great question. I feel like, um, to be honest, we redefine what success looks like for us constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think 
as we as we grow and as we add, you know, months and years on to how long we've been kind of in existence, I think it's going to continue to evolve right now for us. You know, we really want to be a household name. We want people who are part of Divine Nine, the minute they're about to go to the gym, to think about us first, you know, to go to our website, grab a piece of, you know, apparel or clothing they can toss on, you know, so you're repping your org while you doing your reps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we want, we want people to to know who we are, you know, and I think that that's, that would be success for us right now. You know, and of course, as we grow, we would like to be the ones called upon for our homecoming events, like you said, or any real events that are going on. Um, definitely being a part of being immersed in this culture, being immersed in the different organizations. You know, we have a few more organizations that we're applying to be licensed for. And so success for us right now is getting license for all the organizations so that we can continue to reach out because we're getting messages all the time as someone reach out to me like where's the zeta stuff i was like it's coming <laughs> we had to get licensed <laughs> but um yeah, yeah the, zeta, the zetas and the who else the sigma is eating need to act right is that what you're saying <laughs> i didn't say that see I this is petty that. ass podcast kind of creepy <laughs> 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 so drop drop the drop the URL so we know where to shop and let us know some of the places that you'll be in the next coming weeks and months. Uh, so you can follow us everywhere um, at Divine Fitness. Um, our website is www.divinefitness.com and that's spelled D-I-V-9-N-E-Fitness.com. Again, Divine Fitness across all social media platforms. Website again is www.divinefitness.com. Uh, some places that we are going to be at, uh, we're going to be at Norfolk State. University for Homecoming. We're looking to secure um, Homecoming for uh, Coppin State as well as Morgan State um, as soon as we hear back from them. Yeah. And we have a few more um, places that are yet to be announced. Coppin and Morgan, act right, please. Yeah. Act right, please. They're they in the backyard. Divine Fitness in Baltimore, out of Baltimore. So don't, yeah. don't, don't act, don't act brand new, Morgan, and don't yeah. act brand new. Coppin. Yes, I got roots in Morgan too. My family, you know, my mom was a secretary there. My dad taught there for years, so. And I went there for one semester. That doesn't oh, <laughs> Morgan, I'm, a, no, Morgan, I'm about to cut that. I'm about to cut that out. Yeah, Morgan, that's, that's, didn't hear it that, should Morgan. count. It should count. My sister graduated <laughs> and my dad graduated. Use count. that. Use count. that for me. I have transcripts. I paid my money. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Morgan. I'm sorry, Morgan. Just focus on me. My mom, my dad, and my sister. My brother all went through that, just so you know. Just so you know. Uh, <laughs>